Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you different ways you can create gradients in SIFUI. So we're going to start with a plain SIFUI view. You can see that it simply displays Hello World. The first thing I'm going to do is color up the whole screen. So I will going to use a vertical stack and then I will set the frame to be a maximum width to be infinity and maximum height also to be infinity. When you do that, you can already see these blue lines appearing, which is telling you that the vertical stack has now grown and it is taking up most of the screen. Let's go ahead and change the background color to see that how it actually looks like. If you want to get rid of the top and the bottom, you can go ahead and also set the edges ignoring safe area to all. So all the safe area is actually being ignored. Right now you can see that we are using one single color, which is blue. There are many different ways of applying a gradient in SIFUI, and one of those is linear gradient. Let's go ahead and remove the color blue and type linear gradient. Linear gradient itself is a view, so that's why you can pass it to the background function. And if you try to implement the default implementation by simply pressing the return key, you can see that it already fills it out with some colors, which in this case is red and blue. You can see that the re le linear gradient, I can't even spell that, but linear gradient starts from the leading, which means that it's starting from the left hand side and going towards the right hand side. The end point over here is trailing, which means the right hand side, and that is blue. So whatever the first point you will provide, it will be the first color, which is this one, and the second color will be the ending point. Now, if I want to change the color, I can go ahead and do that. There are multiple ways of changing the color. I can simply go over here in the color red, and I can call it color yellow. So now, the starting point, the leading point will be yellow, but the ending point, the trailing point will be blue. If I don't want to do left and right, I can also change it. There are many different options available. If you want to start from the top, you can select the top. And the ending point, you can also select the bottom, which means it's going to go down. And going down, it will start to turn blue. Whenever I'm putting colors, usually, I'm getting the color from some other website. Maybe they have really nice colors. One of the ways you can get the color is by using the color literal. You can see that by putting a color literal, it actually literally puts the color in there. And the good news is that you can use this color literal to select another color that you want. Let me show you what it, I actually mean. On this website, which is flat UI colors, you can see different colors presented. This is just one website. There might be hundreds and hundreds of other websites that allow you to do that. What I want to do is click on this color literal. I can pick any color I want, but I actually want to pick the color from the flat UI colors. Or maybe your UX designer has given you some sort of a colors and you want to pick from there. I can go ahead and click. I can click on other. I can use a dropper tool. And I can select any color I want. Let's go ahead and select purple. And now you can see that my first color is now purple. And my second color is actually blue. Let's go ahead and also use the color literal for the second color. I can keep it to be white or I can click on it, click on other select the dropper tool, and then use any color I want. Perfect. So I will always use the color literal because it allows us to visually see the color, what is being applied. And it also allows you to pick the colors from some sort of a list, UX design, or anywhere. So this was the linear gradient. Now let's go ahead and move to a different kind of a gradient, which is called the radial gradient. Now let's go ahead and move to radial gradient. I've already added all the code for linear gradient and I've commented it out so you can use it later on. 
For radial gradient, radial gradient basically forms a radius, kind of like a circle. And the gradient is going to be expanding from a small circle to a larger circle, depending on where you put it. So by default, if I implement the radial gradient, you can see it's again, the colors are red and blue. The center is meaning the gradient is actually starting from center. And it is starting radius is five, which is kind of small, and is going to 500. Now this radius actually does matter. Because if you start from five and you go to 50, then you can see everything is very, very dark, right? So if you want a fade effect, you put a larger number and you can see that it has, it has a fading effect. I can also change the start value to be 50. And now you can see it's a little bit more darker. If I put it like 200, it's gonna be very, very dark. So usually when to give it a fading kind of effect, you start with a lower or radius and end radius is much higher. So if I go ahead and put it 900, you can see it's very much fading away. All right. Depending on your needs, depending on what you want to do, you can also set the center. Right now it is starting from the very, very center, but you can also say it's going to be top leading, which is starting from top left or top trailing or bottom leading, bottom trailing, bottom center. So you have all of those different actions. If I go ahead and change the value of the end radius in this case, you can see we have a nice kind of a fading effect going from the top left to the bottom right. So this radial gradient can definitely create these kind of amazing effects, just like the linear gradient that you saw. The final one is the angular gradient. Let's go ahead and check out angular gradient now. now angular gradient is a little bit different because in angular gradient, you only have to pass in the center point. So let's go ahead and create angular gradient. We can pass in the gradient with colors and the center. Let's go ahead and make sure that we are writing the correct code. Let's go ahead and do it again. There we go. And angular gradient. Let's refresh our interface. There we go. So you can see that the angular gradient is actually being created between the color red and blue. Now keep one thing in mind that the colors in the linear gradient as well as radial gradient, they're an array. So you can pass in more colors if you want. You're not tied up to only using red and blue. I mean, I can go ahead and pass in color dot yellow. It's an array. So I can pass in more and more colors that I want. So you can see that now I'm passing more colors. And I can say whatever purple or something. And I can go ahead and make it very, very rainbow-like color. Pretty cool, right? And all of this stuff can easily be done by angular gradient or any other kind of a gradient. So now you have learned about how you can create gradients in Swift UI. If you want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy courses. I have many different courses ranging from Swift UI course to Flutter course to MVVM design pattern course and data structures course and a lot of other courses. You can see that I have courses on MVVM design pattern as well as Swift UI with Firebase. If you're looking for writing clean code, you can use this course. So I have a lot of courses available for you that you can check it out. And that will be the best way to support my work. I'm working very, very hard to make sure I create more and more videos on YouTube. And in order for your support, it's uh, it will be great if you can support my work. Now, all the links to these courses are right there in the description. So make sure that you use those links. Uh, if you use those links, then I get to keep a little bit more revenue. So please use those referral links that are available in the YouTube description. Thank you so much. And I really hope that you have enjoyed this video.